The increasing importance of cinema has mirrored the importance of representation in our society. Representation might be the most valuable player in the Game of Thrones of cinema. But what does it mean? It is the process of constructing, mediating, selecting images, places, ideas to present gender, age, ethnicity, national and regional identity, social issues and events to an audience. In a country like India, defined by differences of culture, caste, class and religion, social reality cannot be a one-size-fits-all model that caters to the likes of mainstream patriarchy and the caste system. However, a commercially driven enterprise Indian film industry often gives more importance to what their dominant, upper caste, cis-head audiences want at the cost of further marginalizing and stereotyping the minorities. Their portrait ends up being painted, but with colors chosen by the biased perception of the mainstream. Now, some might suggest that misrepresentation is still representation, so do these distorted portraits have any real consequence? It is difficult to answer. Put lightly, the processes of representation are complex and do not end with mere portrayal on the big screen. To understand the impact of representation in films, we need to look at two factors. First, the difference between good and bad representation. Second, the Indian audience and their experience of cinema. In the most straightforward manner, bad representation is when narratives are created of minorities, for majorities, and by majorities. Get it? In direct contrast, good representation is when narratives are created of minorities, for minorities, and by minorities. These narratives put minority identities on a spectrum, eliminate stereotypes, and advance social change. For instance, female identity is often subsumed within male-dominated settings and split between two polar extremes, good sexuality and bad sexuality. The passive wife of Dada Sahib Falke's Raja Harish Chandra, long-suffering but heroic mother figure of Mother India, the progressive yet naive journalist of 1994 blockbuster Mora, who woos her lover and provides erotic pleasure to the audience with his central performances on Tipte Barsa Pani and Tu Chees Badi Hai Mast Mast, the traditional, modest, ideal woman for a foreign-educated hero in Ham Saat Saath Hai and Viva, or the eye candies props to the narratives of men in Agnipath, Bharat, is the embodiment of good sexuality. As opposed to the bad girl of Kati Patang, Jism, Saat Khun Maaf, Cocktail, the item girl of Joker, Fiza, Khalnayak, and the vamp of Shri 420, Aarti, and Devdi, who were prototypical Vanton women with overt sexual displays of lust. Queer identities are subsumed within heteronormative settings and used to provide comic relief or justify mental sickness and sexually predatory behavior. Mere Ang Neme Number from the 1981 super hit Lavaris, where Amitabh Bachchan cross dressed as a woman to be mistaken as a eunuch, Govinda in Auntie Number no. 1, or Ajay Devgan Tushar Kapoor in Golmal Returns, evoke laughter with their portrayal of queer identities. Films like Kya Cool Hai Am, Partner, Dil ne jise apna kaha, masti, and many more featured horrific stereotypes of trans women as sexually predatory. Dalit identities are subsumed within Brahminical settings and portrayed through a lens of pity and always separate from the mainstream culture. This misplaced representation is evident in films like Sujata, where an adopted low caste woman yearns for the affection and acceptance of a Brahmin family. Lagan, which uses a differently abled Dalit man to celebrate token inclusion embraced by the upper caste protagonist, and the recently released film Article 15, which portrays a Brahmin saviour who comes from the urban progressive land to save the pre-executed Dalit. The representation of minority identities also becomes a problem when dominant filmmakers are involved. Despite good intentions, due to political correctness and authenticity of authority, 
This is predominantly because these directors and filmmakers do not know how to do it and because of this uncertainty end up having immediate recourse to the cliches of representation they were trying to eliminate. The depictions often play into the prejudices deep-seated in their perception of the other and the operation of power in the society. The power structures in the society shape the audience's preferences Audiences' preferences shape directors' preferences. Directors' preferences are also shaped by, you guessed it, and profit comes when mainstream audiences are cozy and comfortable in their blanket of happy, delightful ignorance. But, contrary to what now some of you may suggest, removing all stereotypes, employing filmmakers from minority communities, depicting livid reality does not guarantee a positive impact. In fact, any impact at all, because representation does not exist in polar extremes of good and bad either. The Indian audience will tell you why. According to data compiled and analyzed by consulting firm Ormax Media, over a billion movie tickets were sold across India for the first time in 2019. But what does this mean? This means that Indians are divided by diversity, but united by cinema. And popular cinema caters to our diversity by providing us with diverse dishes all on the same platter. Average Indian cinema goers, otherwise known as habitues, expect masala, a mix of ingredients such as action, comedy, romance, tragedy, music, and dance, all in the same film. And filmmakers aim to meet these expectations by constructing a variety show with something for everyone rather than a seamless and linear narrative following a single theme. In the blockbuster films, a tragic scene is somewhat abruptly followed by comedy, which then shifts to a romantic dance and ends with a climactic action scene entailing the victory of good over evil. For an average Indian movie watcher, Movie experiences are social experiences, exclusively enjoyed with friends and family. The Indian audience is an active spectator who engages in participatory viewing instead of passive. Basically, they are in it for the whole ride, no matter how bumpy, as long as they are sitting beside the hero, giving him advice, rooting for him when he makes a move on the heroine, swooning when a romantic song comes on and cheering when the good guy defeats the bad guy. According to Little John and Force, the uses and gratifications approach uses members of the audience as actively utilizing media content rather than being passively acted upon. An Indian audience is the perfect example of a diverse audience who is active and only seeks content that is worthy of their time and attention. Filmmakers are fully aware, or at least try to be, of what their viewers want and try to keep their attention for at least three hours with the help of satisfying masala. But this entertaining masala is often not present in films dealing with complex social issues that require the mainstream audience to confront their prejudices and question their normality. So naturally, the audience either conveniently sidelines the movie or severely denounces it like in the case of Fire because of its portrayal of a lesbian relationship between two sisters-in-law, Sita and Radha. Therefore, in a country that deeply cherishes the experience of cinema and molds its national identity around it, it becomes extremely difficult to challenge the status quo without hurting national sentiments or securing the title of anti-national. So what is the solution? Think of this as a situation where you have to medicate someone unaware of their illness or reluctant to get better. How would you medicate them? Start by following these four steps. First, acknowledge their fears. Identify where these fears come from and why they hold them dear. Second, make them understand the benefit of medicine and what will happen if they do not take it. Explain the importance of addressing such issues. Third, dilute the taste of the medicine by dissolving it with a sweeter tasting liquid. Dilute the intensity of the message but send it across. Fourth, make someone they are fond of responsible for medicating them. 
when a mainstream actor uses their leverage to talk about a social issue, it generates wide outreach and acceptance. Let's take the recently released film Shubh Mangal Zada Savthan as an example to explain this analogy. This film follows the journey of two gay men as they try to navigate their relationship in a heteronormative setting and fight for familial acceptance. Although lack of authentic representation, dilution, misogyny, casual sexism derails storylines of stereotypical female prototypes is glaringly problematic. But it still confirms with popular culture and invites more eyeballs to the theatre. So twisted, right? This is what we can call a foot-in-the-door technique, which helps in opening conversations around an important issue that most people in the audience would fail to even acknowledge. The film acknowledges the fears of Aman's orthodox family that stem from social stigma and internalized homophobia and tackles them by inducting the science behind love as evidence to eradicate the difference between heterosexual and homosexual relationships. Intense and revealing scenes are masked by contrasting background score to rub some ice on the burn. Brutal reality is served with comedy and the uncomfortable message is diluted with fitting family drama that runs parallel to the assertion of queer identity. To obtain the acceptance of a mainstream film, a mainstream actor is featured as a gay man without apology or inhibition. The film is marketed as a commercial entertainer for homophobic people and it manages to give a variety show to a heterogeneous audience who administer the dose without showing much reluctance or disapproval. Although it is difficult to gauge the degree of impact a film like this has in terms of igniting systematic and societal changes, Shubhmangal Zada Savthan's box office success is unparalleled to the gender non-confirming films that came before it. However, is a diluted depiction of an important issue through a masala movie enough? Merely depicting the experiences of minority identities will not do as that would at best position viewers in the point of view of the director, but does not enable the audience to enter into the experience. The spectator will be able to view the portrait. But how do we help them emphatically experience the scene that is being painted? Through authentic storytelling. Authentic storytelling can be achieved with the help of reception theory. Reception theory observes filmmakers, directors, producers, scriptwriters as both storytellers and story hearers who listen for themes, emotions, ideologies being played out in the stories of communities and recreate them to draw in potential audience. The audience is central to the selection, construction and mediation of stories and employs interpretation and interaction to connect with the performance on screen. And this connection is only formed if the film either confirms to the beliefs of the Indian audience or uses themes and emotions that are universal and act as a binding factor, more like a bonding factor between the audience. Basically, if you can't offer a sanskari larki to our hero's family, then why bother? Now, how do I make people care about my message or at least pay attention to it if it's not mainstream? Dalit filmmaker and screenwriter Nagraj Manjule presents a solution to this problem by ensuring that the film is not lacking in craft. Quote, If you overlook the cast angle in Sairat and Fandry, the films are still entertaining. They manage to move the audience. This makes it easier for me to tackle production roadblocks and reach a wider audience. Unquote. So it's clear. Good storytelling that is something for everyone and authentic representation is the way forward. In fact, the only way forward. So now, will you help us help these directors a little by subscribing, liking, sharing and commenting on this video? Tell us what you want in a good, authentic story in the comments below. For more content, watch our previous video on how Bollywood influences gender.